Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, today we are not taking a look at Iron Helm, but we are taking a look at Ten Helm. It's little micro cousin here, micro brother or sister. And I did want to uh, just demonstrate how the Ten Helm box does fit very nicely in your regular Ten Helm box. And I do know that there is a new kind of expansion coming out for Tin Helm soon, or Iron Helm soon, I should say. And I think it's going to come in a different box so you can add everything together. I'm hoping that it also still includes space for Tin Helm. So Tin Helm is from the same designer, and that is Jason Glover, and that, with illustrations by Jason Glover and Daniel Wil um, Welthal. And this says that it is a perilous solo micro quest. And this says on the back here that the Brotherhood of the Red Cloth long made their home deep in the abandoned mines of the Black Mountains. But a sickness came upon them as they delved too deep, and their minds have been twisted and their attention has shifted to creating wicked evils. Darkness now lives here, and only a true hero can cure the madness that has consumed all. So this game, of course, like Iron Helm, is available on Game Crafter, and they have provided this to me as a review copy. The Dungeon Dive has partnered with the Game Crafter, so I am able to get review copies for any games that kind of fit the theme of the Dungeon Dive channel. So if there are games on the Game Crafter that you would like to know more of, please let me know and I will try to get review copies. Because I know a lot of their games can be quite expensive and there aren't a lot of on a lot of them, there aren't reviews and, and really good information out there. So if I can get the game and check it out and then let people know, you know, if it is worth their time and money. Uh, so far, I think, I think Tin Helm is pretty good, especially if you like Iron Helm, then I think it's kind of a no brainer. It is a, just a little version of Iron Helm that fits in your pocket. It offers that same kind of experience, a little bit different, but similar enough and but i also think it is maybe different enough that if you were only somewhat interested in iron hell but maybe didn't want to splurge on the actual full game maybe with its expansions if you were just somewhat interested then i do think iron helm might scratch that itch for you and i would also recommend picking it up so the game comes in this small tin and is very easy to set up and put away there and so the first thing you're going to do when you're going to set up your game is you can take a look at your instruction cards here. So all of the instructions are on these cards and they are in order. I think my got a little mixed up here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pages of uh, rules here, 14 cards of rules. You are an adventurer trapped in the stronghold of the Red Cloth. These once peaceful clerics have been corrupted by vile magic. You must locate all three shards of Brahm to release the clerics of their spell and to find your way out of the dungeon. If you cannot do so by the end of the fifth level of the dungeon, you also become corrupted and lose the game. Then you have your contents list and a little uh, sample setup of how you're gonna set up your table and then your rules here and to find the shards i really like this at the end of the rules here it does tell you exactly how you're going to find your shards so you can find shards by one defeating the possessor which is a certain enemy you can f uh, by finding a shrine which is a location by trading a turnip and loot item with the pig man which is an encounter or by having enough favor favors like xp uh, when you locate the altar and that's another location or by finding one in a chest, by looting a chest. So those are the different ways that you can find one of the three different shards. And those shards come with the game and they are represented by these uh, purple crystals here. And you also have a little meeple to keep track of your position in the dungeon. It comes with two uh, small D6 a cube to keep track of your XP or your favor, and then a couple other different colored cubes to keep track of other things. 
You also have your tracking cards here and they have cool little art on the back. Again, I love the, uh, I just love the line art in this game. It is so good. And these are going to have your dungeon level and a, a space here to keep track of your enemy's health. So you will place your meeple here on level one to start the game. You will use a red token there to keep track of your enemy's health. You have your health tracker there. And that is going to be determined by your class and your race. And then you have your favor tracker. So that's your XP. You're basically going to be gaining favor uh, slash XP every time you defeat an enemy. And then you also have a place to keep track of your energy and your food. And energy is determined by your class race combo and your food is as well. So the next thing you're going to do is you are going to pick a class and race. So this is pretty cool where you have four different cards. On one side, you have the different classes. And on the other side, you have the different races. And so you can give those a shuffle. So I am going to be the crawling. All right, so the crawling, then I'll shuffle up the uh, classes here. The crawling marauder. So that's going to be my class. So your race class combo here, I'm the crawling marauder. I'm going to start with eight plus five, so 13 health. So I'll add that there, so 13 health. I have eight plus two energy, so I'm going to start with 10 energy. Now energy, the main thing that energy is used for, it is a currency in the game that you are going to spend to do damage in combat. So uh, here as a marauder, if I spend one energy, I do one damage. Two energy, five damage. Three energy, I will do eight damage. And then your class also tells you what starting uh, gear, what gear you start with. So the marauder starts with an ax and a bedroll. So then I can come over here and I can look for my, uh, my loot. So your starting gear here, I have a bedroll. So I can gain an extra health when I rest at the campsite when I use that. And an ax. And the axe, when I roll doubles during combat, I may re-roll. Combat is pretty simple. You roll the d6, you subtract one from the other, and that's how much damage you do, plus your uh, damage there. And then, so here, I would do two damage. If you ever roll ones, or I'm sorry, if you ever roll doubles, doubles of, of anything, then that is a miss. And the axe allows you to re-roll doubles. And then these starting gear cards are also double-sided to represent some of the other gear. Then you have an enemy deck here, and the enemies are pretty much predetermined. You're not going to be flipping these over at random. Each time you have an encounter, it's going to tell you which enemy you're going to be fighting. And the different enemies will include a Wraith, a Skelepede, Dark Wraths, a Doom Skull, a Mimic, a Spider, a watcher and the possessor so the possessor has a shard and if you defeat the possessor then you gain a, a one of the shards and each of the enemies is going to have a certain number of health and that is going to be added to the um, level of the dungeon you are in so at level one the possessor is going to have seven health the dagger there represents how much extra damage it's going to do to you in addition to its uh, d6 attack same as that so four minus three is one plus one. So it would do two damage to me. That's how much damage it blocks. And then this is how much, um, how much favor or XP you get when you defeat the monsters. So the monsters aren't super difficult in the game, which is nice. Combat doesn't take a long time. Then you also have a small loot deck. And these are the items that you can find in the various treasure chests. So you can find a symbol, um, a ring, a turnip that's one of the items that you can trade with the pigman to get one of the shards you can find a shield a wedge a sword a potion and a gill net then you also have these three uh, location cards and these are location slash information cards these are special encounters that you can have while you are exploring you can find a grove in which you can look for mushrooms you can encounter the pigman where you can trade items. You can discover the altar here. 
and the altar depending on what your favor total is well then different things can happen to you and on the reverse side is you can have your campsite this is a good place you want to visit you can discover the shrine and when you do you will gain a shard or you can discover the labyrinth in which you can get lost and so these are just kept at the top of the board there and you will reference those when needed so the main part of the game is played with these 12 cards and these are similar to the dungeon cards and regular iron helm and you're going to shuffle those up and then like iron helm you have a choice you can either choose to encounter this card which is the kitchen each one of these cards represents a different location in this dungeon you have a kitchen a sanctum a stash sewers quarters corridor a waterfall a statue an old well a clearing the catacombs and a chasm and each card is going to tell you give you a clue of what is located in that location and the icons are detailed in the instructions here so you can find an enemy a trap a random encounter loot a campsite or water and so if this was the stack here i could look at the kitchen and if I wanted to encounter the kitchen, I know that I'm going to face an enemy and I can also visit a campsite in the kitchen. So I would, let's say I would want to um, encounter that. So we would put that there. So I'm going to encounter that. And then you take the next card and you flip it over and then you encounter the icons in order from left to right. And so each encounter is going to be two cards. There are 12 cards so that means each level of or each level of the dungeon is going to have six total encounters so in this case here in the kitchen i would face the possessor hey right off the bat the first uh, thing in the game i come across the possessor so this would allow me to to gain a shard right away so now i would enter combat with this possessor so like we said the possessor has six health plus one because i'm in the first level of the dungeon so that is uh seven there and uh, there are no he has no special attacks the hero always attacks first so the first thing that i would want to do is i would want to choose how much energy i want to spend on this attack i'm going to spend two energy and that is going to give me five damage okay so i'm going to spend that energy here so i'm going from 10 down to uh, eight and now i roll my d6 and hope i don't get doubles okay so i got doubles however this act says when you roll doubles during combat you may re-roll okay so four and two so four minus two is two plus we did five so that is seven damage and the possessor does block one so that's going to be six damage so that's going to take him down to one uh, health point unfortunately we were, we were not able to defeat him right away so now the possessor is going to attack us six minus four is two plus one is three points of damage so i go down to 10 health and now i will repeat that process um, i just need to do two points of damage basically so i'm going to use one point of energy that's going to give me one damage roll that four minus two is two plus one is three and he blocks one so i do the enough the damage to kill the possessor i would gain two favor and I would gain a shard. So we could take that shard there and put that on our character card. Or actually, we could put that over here. Now, each of the races also has a special ability. The crawling is once per dungeon level while in combat. I may flip a single die to the reverse side when determining damage. So it allows you to manipulate the dice a little bit with damage. Uh, next up in the kitchen, the next icon is the campsite. So now the campsite, you can do a couple of things. You may rest at the campsite, gaining two health and one energy, or I may search for food. So I don't start with any food, and at the end of each level, you do have to feed yourself. And it is important to get some food, so I think that I would do that. So I would take one piece of food, adding it to my inventory from the kitchen. And you're going to do that with uh, six encounter cards. And as you can see, as these are shuffled up differently, you are going to get different combinations of the two cards. Now, let's say you had a card that you wanted to skip. Well, then you would place that down face up 
and then you would automatically do the next card and so that would become your so you wouldn't actually know what was coming up but you might um so you, there's a risk reward element in that game just like there is an iron helm and as just like an iron helm as you play the game as you learn to recognize the different symbols and what they have on the backs of each card you will actually improve so there is a little bit of a memorization element to this game just like there is an iron helm and in this combination here in the stash i would have a loot and then if this card was face up the loot would be a shield so then i would go to my loot cards and i would find the shield and i would add that to my character's inventory like that and then you're going to play through five different levels hoping to find all three of those shards before you reach the end of level five in order to win the game. And if you don't do that, or if you die, you lose the game. So it's a relatively simple game. It's pretty quick playing. It has a very small footprint, has a very small box. Uh, this is a game that fits inside the box of another game, so you can't go wrong with that. I really do think this is a great small box game to add to your small box game collection. I can't really think of anything wrong with it. You know, maybe there is a lack of variety, but when you're dealing with something this small, you kind of know that there is a lack of variety going in. And so I don't really think it is an issue. And I do think that the price is low enough to make this kind of an impulse buy if you even like the theme, if you're in the dungeon crawls or, or fantasy themed card games. And there is also a point system for scoring. So if you're into that, you can uh, score your points and uh, keep an ongoing tally of how good you are doing in the depths of the dungeon of Tin Helm. So, all right, you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.